caught the ear of uh, Master P, who's mm-hmm. arguably the biggest CEO of all times. How did right. you catch the ear of him? All right, well, shit, man. I'm going to tell you what's crazy about that, right? This is a true story. You know, it's funny because I never knew who P was. I, you know, I, Romeo Ronell, he he's from Kansas City, right? And uh, he was like a local yeah, rapper. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah he was, yeah, yeah, shout out. He was my barber, man. R- Romeo Ronell's from my neighborhood. He His barber shop was two blocks down from where I lived at. I was a kid literally walking to his barber shop. And so he used to bring little local concerts. You know, he would, like, get the club and do all of that. Man, this is before I knew anything about show business. I'm probably maybe 13, 14 or something like that. And I can remember him, me hearing about him talking about Master P. You know, I didn't know who this guy was, you know what I mean? And this is probably around the mama's bad boy time. Like, this is ghetto's trying to kill me, probably right before that or something like that. And, um, and so... Uh, you know, I just I, I didn't pay no attention to it. You know what I mean. So then uh, I was in a rap group, you know, called CCG, which con- consists of me and my partner Cisco. And so we incorporated another guy named Dank Nitty uh, for a spell, who used to do beats and rap with us and shit. And so uh, Dank Nitty, he, you know, people used to say all the time, like, man, that other guy that y'all got, he sounds just like P. He sounds just like Master P. Me and Cisco had never heard of him. It was like, man, we don't know. Who is this guy, Master P? And so uh, so anyway, we end up, you know, saying, man, let's let's see what this is about because people keep saying this guy sounds like that. So we heard Ghetto's Trying to Kill Me, and Dang Nitty was a big fan of Master P. So that was my first exposure to P, which was Ghetto's Trying to Kill Me. So how the No Limit situation came about was, um, you know, we had been doing tapes, local tapes in Kansas City. You know, we had been recording, recording, recording. At this time, it was just really us. You know, Tech was out, of course. He was doing his thing. Uh, he was a little bit more advanced than us because he, he was a little older than us as well. So he was kind of finding his way in, in that scene, too. He was going through his deals with QD3 and, you know, everybody trying to get out and get on or whatever. It was a handful of us in the city trying to do it. And so... uh I came up with an idea one day. I was like, man, you know what? You know, I didn't know what the verbiage was. I was like, man, let's, we need to start sending some of this shit out. You know what I'm saying? Let's put together. I didn't even know the concept of a press kit. I just knew that my common sense told me, okay, let's take some pictures. They need to know what we look like. You know, let's record the tapes and let's get, let's tell them about us, man. I was sending handwritten bios and shit, right? So I didn't even know how to do it. Man, I'm doing this like, and I'm writing each letter by hand. This ain't even no copying oh, shit. Like I'm God. like 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm like 16, right? So, uh, so now, mind you, this is when I understood. I was sending shit to Jive. I was sending shit to Atlantic. You know, I'm getting the addresses off the back of my tapes. You know, and so uh, I, I was receiving them. I was getting them back unopened. You know, and they was just stamping on there. Were not, you know, except unsolicited material. That was my first experience with that. So, I, you know, at first I'm like, damn, they don't like our shit. They didn't even listen to it. Like, what the fuck this is? You know what I mean? So finally somebody told me, like, no, nah, they just don't want to open it because it didn't come by way of agent or, you know, A&R or nothing like that. So they not even going to fuck with it. They get that all the time. So I said, damn. I said, okay. So, again, not even understanding the business, knowing nothing, but just going off of just ambition and hunger and just common sense. I said, well, damn, I need, maybe I need to go to smaller people. So I was like, well, shit, let me try to, I didn't know the term indie major or independence, you know, just, I just thought they were people I could touch, you know what I mean? So I said, fuck it. So I I, I pulled up in a minute, I don't know if you remember them, in a minute records and, and, uh, uh, black market, no limit, rap a lot. I just started going to people who I just, I didn't, again, I didn't know the term independent, just somebody I felt was smaller. And so what I did, because, you know, I was doing my little thing back then, so I had the big white brick cell phone and shit where they charge you 35 cents a minute and shit back then, right? So um, what I would do is I would call the voicemail, the numbers, if the tape had a number, I would call and I would fill up the voicemail. Man, my name Court Dog. I'm from Kansas City. Man, I sent you a tape. You need to listen to it. And I would purposely fill up everybody's voicemail. And so 
it, what ended up happening is, you know, I guess P got tired of me calling. You know what I'm saying? Filling this shit up. So he was like, man, who the fuck is this dude? Keep calling. You know, talking about listen to a tape. So he sent Mr. Serve on in, you know, to go get the package. Like, man, go get this dude's tape, man, because this dude going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> who the fuck is he? He he persistent <laughs> as anything. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. and that was it. And, and what happened now, let me, I, I kind of skipped some time. What that was, th- this was when I was, uh, I was 17, actually, about to be 18, because I graduated high school. So this is about, I graduated in 94, so this is about 95. And so, uh 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 he has sent you know uh served to go get it so he hit me back man you know what i'm saying and was like you know he called me and i i was shocked you know what i'm saying and that that was how that started man see that's crazy it shows that your know, your persistence it paid off mm-hmm. that's pretty much how i got in with murder dog i kept bugging the shit out of black dog kept calling the office <laughs> you know what i'm saying it, Eventually, he's like, man, let's just shut this guy up, let him do some reviews, whatever. Right. But yeah, man, that, that's that's huge. So next thing you know, um, you, you know, you guys got a, a deal with Master P or whatnot. Uh, you, you're on the Down South Hustlers, which went gold mm-hmm. at the time, which was huge. Um, right, right. So coming out of Kansas City, you would be the first, probably the first artist with a you know gold plaque credentials um, at that time. Um, mm-hmm. That's got to be a huge accomplishment for you too. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You know, to be honest with you, man. I mean, I, I, I mean, you probably have to check the. I mean, I, I'm sure it's not too far from the truth, but I mean, to be honest with you, there, there's a lot of things I was the first of coming out of Kansas City. I mean, not to slight anybody or nothing like that, because I mean, we all, you know, contributed and made each other better. You know what I'm saying? And we all, you know, like I, I'll say it. I mean, you know, I, I could in some ways be considered, you know, one of the young bosses of Kansas City, but you know, in terms of of, of music, you know actual content and music, you know, I mean, you got to get at the tech, you know, tech is the the king of Kansas City when it comes to uh, music, you know what I'm saying, but like I've always said, I mean, myself, Rich the Factor, you know, uh, uh, Money G, Southside Posse, I mean, it's a, it's a host of them, I don't want to forget nobody, but, you know, we all contributed uh, a brick, you know, to this illustrious foundation tech has built on, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying, S-1-7. you know, uh, there's yeah, a a, absolutely. It's a it's a bunch of us, man. I mean, I could really go through the gambit, but you know, uh, uh, you know, we all contributed and pushed each other, made each other better. You know what I mean? Uh, but as far as me, yeah, I was like, that's the thing, man. I, I was younger than what a lot of people thought. You know, just because I hustled and the way I moved. The way I moved in the streets, the way I moved in business, the way I moved in the music. A lot of people, you know, they thought that I was I was younger than everybody. Like I'm the like I'm the baby from that era. You know what I'm saying? So uh so yeah, I, I was the first one to uh bring a gold plaque uh back to the city in terms of, of uh rap music, you know, at that time. And uh, you know, and that was that was the start of it right there, man. I mean, we was on like it was it was cracking right there. And for those that don't know, you know, we did the song uh, R.I.P., uh, which is on uh, I don't know this one or this two I can't remember, but I was uh with the third I was second no I was third I can't remember I was third I think on there, and we did and our if you remember on the inside of the cover it has CCG coming soon. We did an album called 100% Game, and uh, it was me and my partner Cisco. But, you know, the, the situation, <clears throat> excuse me, had got a little funky, you know. And that, that's a, the thing a lot of people don't know is what happened was, you know, P. It flew us out to Oakland, you know. And, I mean, man, that was big for us, bro. Like, we hadn't, you know what I'm saying, we hadn't win any, you know, what you know? I mean, we from Kansas City. You know what I'm saying? So that was big for us. Like he sent us tickets, brought us out there, man. We had never done anything like that in the music, you know. So we young guys with you know big dreams and different things like that. So you know he had us in the studio with Al Eaton and and K. Lou, and these were big guys at the time. You know what I mean? These were guys that we was seeing on the back of two shorts tapes. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, uh. Uh, he got us in the studio, so we were just initially going out there just to do the Down South Hustles because at the time, Bone had came out, you know what I mean? 
a thuggish, ruggish bone had had blew up. So that kind of, you know, I mean, it put us in that line to where P was like, oh, shit, this is my version of Bone Thugs and Harmony. You know what I mean? So uh, we had came, we had did that. But it was some internal shit that kind of happened, man, uh, that sidelined us a little bit. And, and what that was was, you know, just it, my partner that I rap with, man, him and P just kind of didn't get along. They just didn't. And, and part of that was because, me and P had established a relationship uh, prior to us going out there. Like, me and P, I, I made contact. Like, he knew me. Like, we talked for months before we even went to Oakland. So me and him had established a relationship. Him and my guy, they never talked. They didn't even know each other. They was like strangers, you know what I mean? So uh, at the time, we had a manager, uh, and he didn't know what he was doing either. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and we were kids, so understand, we 17, 18 you know, with these, you know, adult life decisions with no reference point, you know, so we kind of got to figure it out as we go along, you know what I'm saying? You know, so uh, uh, the manager that we had at the time, you know, he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, you know, he was from New Jersey and shit, he knew more than us, but he didn't know what the fuck he was doing, period, you know what I mean? So uh. the the funny thing about that dynamic is me and P got along really well, I mean, we hit it off off the, off the rip, you know, he was like a big brother. But I never really got along with our manager at the time. But my partner, him and our manager, like they clicked. You see, so it was it was, so it, you see it was kind of these um, antagonizing kind of a uh, uh, little undercurrents going on. And so uh, when we got out to Oakland, we did the uh, the you know P was like fuck it, let's do an album. I was like cool, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? So our manager, you know, he was hitting P like. Man, so what's up on the paperwork? What's up with the points? What's up with the bill? What's a woo and all this old dumb shit, right? So, you know, P was kind of like, you know, I mean, he he just starting out. He like, man, you know, these guys, ain't nobody checking for these guys. Like, I'm giving them an opportunity. Like, let's see what happened. I mean, we, you know, let's see what happened, and then we'll go from there. So I can remember, you know, I'm 17, man, again, common sense. And just, you know, my mind frame was like, okay. It ain't like we got a bidding war right now. It ain't like we got a bunch of labels checking for us at the point, you know, at this moment. I said we popular back home a little bit, but you know what I'm saying? That 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 ain't shit, you know, not where we trying to get to, you know what I'm saying? So I said, well, fuck it. My exact words was like, let's go ahead and do it, you know what I'm saying? And and, and once the shit blow up, if the shit do what it's supposed to do, then we make ourselves viable. You know, then, you know, shit, he got to, you know, make it right with us and do what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought like a hustler because that's really what I was doing. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, but my manager, you know, he didn't take it like that. Like, he was, like, pushing P like he was a major. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we want this much advancement. We want this. We want that. You know, you would have thought that we we came in and had already sold 100, 200,000 records. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, it, it, you know, it put me in a precarious position at that time because, you know, it was like, fuck. It was like, damn, you know, I can remember P like, man, you know, you my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm vibing with you, but the the, the, the baggage and shit that you coming with, like, that shit is complicating shit, you know. But, again, at 17, you know, I'm like, well, shit, I came with my guy. Like, you know, it got to be both of us or nothing, you know what I mean? <laughs> So P respected that. He was like, you know, I respect that, man. You know, so what happened was we went back to Kansas City, and that's where you see me start grinding out independently. But me and P always kept a relationship, even through, you know, his heights. I could always get him on the phone. You know, he fadangled my relationship with Selecto, with Southwest at the time. Like, he walked me through all of that. So it wasn't like a, okay, fuck you, nigga, go on ahead, you know, whatever, whatever. It was like, okay, man, I get it. You a solid dude. That's your guy. You know what I mean? You want to, you know what I'm saying? You being loyal and you want to do your own thing, I still got your back. So that's how that yeah. situation worked. Respect 